Hey everyone, what's up? Another edition. Sorry about the lighting if it looks a little weird. Uh, I don't know why, but maybe it's just my iPod, but it looks kind of yellow, but... Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, is that this upcoming Raw will be the WWE Draft. As everyone knows, it happens once a year, where everything gets shaken up, and people run different shows, and you really don't know what to expect. And I, I like the draft. It's For me, it's one of the highlights of the WWE calendar year, and that you have WrestleMania, then you have the draft, and then other, my other favorite, personal favorites, Extreme Rules, definitely, so it's like all this is happening at one time, so for that alone, for me, that's pretty cool, you know, so um, I'm just going to jump right on into it, we're just going to blow them by, I just pretty much literally, this is how much of a nerd I am, see this, this is a list not a long list, but a list of people that I think are going to be changed up in the draft. And I actually wrote them down. Yeah, I know. I'm sad. But, um, definitely I really want to get into that. But before I do, a little quick note here. Our truth he's, he's looking strong right now. I mean, that crowd booed him when he lit up that cigarette and blew smoke in Joe Moe's face. I thought that was hilarious. Not for John Morrison and the fact that he lit up a cigarette, but the fact that he did it and no one expected it. That's what I like. I love that curveball. But um, anyway, let's, like I said, just get right into it. Um, like I said, I have four from each show changing, and I sat down for about like five, ten minutes and just played around with the roster, I guess. Um, the guys from Raw, now I'll, I'll do a, one from each. Okay, the very first one, I think going to SmackDown, I think should happen, Daniel Bryan. I think that he would be a very good fit for SmackDown. It'd be a great opportunity for him to get over, I think, and for him to possibly even compete for a world title. Maybe it's a little too early, time will tell though. Second, I think that they actually might do this one, is Alex Riley going to SmackDown. And a lot of people will be like, what? That's stupid. Well, just hear me out. Because now the Miz won't have his Goonie by his side. You know? Now there won't be no more ambushes, I guess, from Alex Riley and distractions. I guess is a better word. And now Miz will have to win fairly. Which sucks. Now, even though he, he's just building momentum, I don't think they'll do this one. I didn't just mention him. Our truth it would be nice to see him back over to SmackDown, but I just don't see that happening anytime soon. I really don't. I mean, if you're making him a heel, it just doesn't make sense to turn him right away, like, they, like they're doing right now. And the last one I have going over to SmackDown is another heel, which is CM Punk. Now, this would leave the Nexus in shambles, you know, you'd have four or five guys, and I think this is really the time because they've all been turning on each other lately. So, just like the core. So I think that this would be a perfect opportunity for their leader to move shows and see what they can do by themselves. I really do. So that's who I have going to SmackDown. Like I said, I only did four. I don't know how m much people are going to be moved, but I have Daniel Bryan, Alex Riley, R-Truth, and CM Punk all going to SmackDown. So it's three heels and one face. So to be fair, I basically did the same thing with uh, who's going to Raw. I chose one face and the rest are heels. But then I started looking at it and I was like, okay, the SmackDown roster, it needs more faces. So I gave them two faces instead of just one like I did with Raw. Because Raw's going to be better off with that. You got John Cena, you got Randy Orton. So I think face wise for Raw, it's, it's totally fine the way it is. Now, going to SmackDown, one of the faces I have might even be kind of a shock in a way. But I think he might shock people in the sense that they might not even see it coming, I guess, is Chris Masters. I think that by having him go to Raw will only make him a huge star. I really do believe that. And I'm not saying, you know, he's going to be John Cena huge or Randy Orton huge, but I think it's going to be a great starting point for him, no doubt about it. Um, next up, uh, a heel going over to Raw, which this one makes sense is Jack Swagger, and that Michael Cole and, you know, the bromance going on, yes, I just used the word bromance, I think that Jack Swagger would be a perfect fit for that. So, who knows, I 
really do hope he does, though. Maybe have him contend for the title again. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, another heel, a core member, Ezekiel Jackson, because, well, let's face it, to me, Big Zeke is better in singles competition than he is in tag teams. I mean, he was in a tag team on ECW, and now he's back on one SmackDown. I think it's just time to let the guy go and see what he has. I really, I, I'll say that to him blue in the face. And the last one is the other face I have going to Raw. Um, like I said, I think this one I'm actually kind of iffy about, and I chose Kofi Kingston because, well, SmackDown's a great place for him, but I think that if SmackDown's getting Daniel Bryan, who's, or SmackDown's not only getting Kofi, rather, I'm confusing myself, they're getting not only Kofi, but Chris Masters, so you have those two, you have Christian, um, you have Kane, I'm, I know, I, I'm at a loss here, I brought up their website, The Undertaker, if he stays healthy, so they will be fine with faces, it just depends on how they use them, I think, and, um, I think Kofi just can bring that excitement, I guess is the word I'm looking for, but, yeah, I think that that, that's just, you know, my predictions real quick. I know it's not much, but I really do hope that WWE can utilize this draft and really put a, a nice batch of fresh faces on each show so that we're not limited to seeing the same matches over and over again and that now we have so many more possibilities. I think when Sin Cara, what they need to do with him is build him up and then eventually trade him over to SmackDown and maybe trade Del Rio to Raw. And I'm sure they will sometime down the line, but whereas right now from what I've heard, they just want to keep him on different shows, which I, I can understand that, just like with Rey Mysterio. And I mean, all three of them are great athletes in their own right. And let me tell you, Sin Cara, he's, he's in person week in and week out. I mean, he, he has botched his entrance a few times, but you can purely tell that's all nerves. And when you go from... A Mexican promotion like he has to the WWE, it's going to be nerve wracking. The crowds are huger, more TV deals, you know, everyone's watching, so it's really tough <laughs> to not get nervous. So, like I said, that's just a little prediction. Um, if you were to ask me about like a supplemental draft, you know, for me, I think supplemental drafts can be pointless. However, there has been a few guys who did make a splash. Zack Ryder was actually one of them. He went from Raw to ECW. Or no, SmackDown to ECW, rather. And even though he wasn't ECW champion, he, he did pretty damn good by himself. And Rosa was by his side, so I, I really do think that he did great on ECW. It just, it's a matter of utilizing the talent and seeing who can really shine. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time.